everyone, I'm DIY Daisy. I'm a content creator and author from the Gold Coast, Australia. And in this video, I'm gonna share a project from my new book, Sew It Yourself. So last year I wrote a book and it's coming out very soon. So I wanted to share a tutorial or a project from the book to give you a little bit of a preview. The project I'm gonna share is the Sophie skirt. And it's something that I started making when I lived in Japan. I got really into uniform dressing and so I made maybe five of these and I still have heaps of them in my wardrobe now because they're just an easy staple, something that's so easy to chuck on with a t-shirt or dress up with a cute top. And I love wearing them all the time. The Sophie skirt is also known as the trapezoid skirt because it's made with two trapezoids sewn together on the side seams with an elastic waistband. So it kind of flares out from your waist and it finishes below the knee and above the ankle. The cool thing about the Sophie skirt is that it's really easy to customize and alter to make it your own. So you could add pockets, you could add ruffles, or you could make a two-toned wavy Sophie skirt, which is the tutorial I'm gonna share in this video. I love the way that the two-toned wavy line takes the skirt from something super simple like a staple and makes it a show-stopping statement skirt. Let me tell you what you need to make a Sophie skirt. Scissors, pins, a ruler, chalk, a measuring tape, matching thread, elastic, a safety pin, a sewing machine, an iron and an ironing board, some paper and a pencil, and you might also need a little bit of extra card. And of course, you're going to need some fabric. I'm using two different colored linens from The Strawberry Thief and I recommend using something that is in a similar weight just so that they pair well together and I'm using contrasting colors. But you could use mixy matchy prints, you could do complementary colors and do like a light green and a dark green, whatever you choose up to you. So in the book I don't share how much fabric you need for each project and that's because you'll need to use the formula that's provided for each project to determine how much fabric you need. So before we get into cutting out our pattern pieces, we're gonna take the formula, which I'll pop up on the screen here, and you can take a screenshot or write it down, and then you're going to take your body measurements and put it into the formula to find your pattern piece dimensions. So before I get into any of the sewing, I like to take my measurements, put them into the formulas, and make a little plan. And I really recommend sketching it out on some paper, just so that you have something to refer to when you're cutting and sewing. Use the formulas now to find your own pattern piece dimensions and then you can get ready to cut. I will mention at the start that the seam allowance used in this tutorial and all of the projects in my book is a one centimeter seam allowance. So if you are planning to do French seams, you might just want to add a little bit of extra ease. Another thing to keep in mind when selecting a fabric is that fabric widths are usually like 110 to 145 centimeters wide. If you aren't able to get fabric that's wide enough for your pattern pieces, you can always turn your pattern pieces on the side and cut them on the cross grain rather than on the grain line. Okay, let's get sewing. Okay, so once we have our pattern piece dimensions all planned out, we're going to mark them onto our fabric and cut them out. I'm gonna do it on a small scale here, just so you can see how I did it because I don't have enough space in my studio. And I'm gonna cut my pieces out on the fold. So I'm gonna fold my fabric in half. And this is going to be the center front of our trapezoid that I'm gonna mark out. So taking my ruler and my chalk, I'm just going to mark out the trapezoid with the dimensions that I found. Your dimensions might be a little bit different to mine, but cut them out in your sizes. Now that I've drawn my trapezoid on the fold, I'm gonna take it away and cut it out. So I've got one trapezoid now, I need to cut another one and I'm going to leave this on the fold so I can cut it out of my other color. So I'm just going to lay it on top, trace around it and cut out another one. Obviously, I'm doing this really roughly just so you can uh, see how I did it. So <laughs> make sure that you do it nice and neatly. All right, here are my two trapezoids cut out and I'm gonna place them on top of each other with the right sides of the fabric facing up. In my case, because I'm using linen that is exactly the same on both sides, it doesn't really matter. But if you are using a fabric that has a print, make sure that the print is facing up on both pieces. Now I'm going to take my chalk and freehand just draw out my wavy line that I'd like to be on the front. And once I'm happy with my wavy line, I'm going to cut it out so that I'm left with four pieces. And here are my four pieces now and they're ready to be mix matched together. So I'm gonna take this one 
and it's gonna go here and this one's gonna go here and that's gonna be my front and my back. So now that we've cut all of our pattern pieces out and we've cut our wavy line, the first step is to stay stitch along that wavy edge to stop it from stretching out when we piece them together with their buddy. And especially when we've cut these wavy edges, sometimes we'll get a bit of that bias there, which makes it really easy to stretch. And we don't really want that to happen because we want our two sides to match up perfectly. So I'm just gonna stay stitch along the edges about half a centimeter from the edge. together the contrasting sides and now I'm gonna sew them together with a one centimeter seam allowance make sure when you sew these curvy edges that you don't pull or stretch out the fabric contrasting sides together and here's what they look like now I haven't ironed or pressed any of the seams yet and that is one of the crucial steps to making this skirt so I'm going to take it over now to my ironing board and just press these seams open and that will give us a really crisp wavy line on the front So I've just finished pressing my seams and it really makes that wavy edge nice and crisp. Now it's time to sew the front and the back together and I'm actually going to do French seams just to make the edges nice and strong. If you'd like to at this point add pockets, inseam pockets, you can totally do that but I'm going to leave no pockets. Personally I don't like to put pockets in my skirts because if I have pockets I want to put something in them like my phone or my wallet and usually they weigh the sides of the skirt down. So that's just me, it's a personal preference. I know everybody loves pockets in their skirts and dresses, but I actually don't. I prefer to carry a bag or a satchel or like wear a bum bag. That's just me. Anyway, time to sew the front and the back together. So usually you would just put front and back together with the right sides facing, but I'm gonna do French seams. So I'm gonna put the wrong sides together and sew up the side seams. I've got my front and back together with wrong sides facing and I'm going to sew up the side seam with a half a centimetre seam allowance. So I've sewn up 
stitch along the edges and now I'm going to take it over to the ironing board, press those seams to the side and then fold them over and then I can finish my front seams. The reason I want to do front seams is because linen like this frays a lot as you can see and I really want to hide those raw edges inside the seams. Okay, let's head over to the ironing board. step of my French seams is to just sew up that side again with a one centimeter seam allowance. sewing up the side seams and the next step is to sew a casing for the elastic waistband. To make a casing I like to take something like a magazine and I'm going to use the cardboard from the back to make myself a little template and here's how I do that. So I get my elastic and I'm using two centimeter old oh, I'm using 2.5 centimeter wide non-rolling elastic and so I know that it's two and a half centimeters but I'm just going to take the measurement to check so it's two and a half I'm going to times that by two so five and then I'm going to add one centimeter so six and that's going to be the width of my template that I'm going to make so I'm just going to draw it out on the back cover of this magazine and then cut it out and I'm not going to use my fabric scissors so hold on okay I got my non fabric fabric scissors these were regular fabric scissors and then one day I found my sister and her boyfriend cutting out plastic laundry baskets with these so that was the end of their life anyway so now I'm gonna cut that template out and so now I can pop that magazine away and I've got my waistband template to use the template I'm going to get my chalk and take it to the top edge which is our waistband edge and line it up with the edge and then just mark mark that all the way along the top of the skirt so that when I take it over to the ironing board I can just fold it over to the to the line I'm going to do it on both sides. I've got my line drawn around the top edge and now I can go back to the ironing board, fold this top edge to the line and press all the way around. Once I've pressed all the way around, I'm going to fold it over again so that I've got a double folded self casing and then the next step after that is to sew up the casing. So I'm gonna head over to the ironing board now and give that a press. Okay, I've created my double folded casing and now I'm going to jump back onto the sewing machine and stitch along the edge to turn that casing into something that will hold some elastic. And this is where I'm actually going to use two different colors of thread. So I'm going to use purple when I'm sewing on the purple side and I'm going to switch my thread to orange when it's time to sew the orange. The final part here is to not forget to leave a three or four centimeter gap so I can insert some elastic on the next step. Elastic. So earlier on we took our waist measurement and 
so it's waist minus 10 centimeters this is just a rough value so you may want to add more or take away but this is how I find elastic for my waist and once I put the elastic in I am going to pin the ends together and try it on just to make sure it's comfy and it's feeling like the right size for me I'm going to take a safety pin now if I can get it off my pin dish and pin it through the end and now I'm going to feed that into the waistband and push it all the way along just scrunching and feeding it through the casing all the way until I reach the other end to check the waistband size and I'm happy with how the elastic's fitting. So I'm gonna stitch the ends together now. You can just go over it a couple times back and forth with a zigzag stitch or you can stitch in a square just to make sure it's nice and secure. Whatever way that you like to attach elastic is up to you. And now I'm gonna pop it under the sewing machine again and stitch the ends together. should do the trick okay and now I can close up my casing and just stitch that little hole closed that I left before my waistband is complete and the final step is to hem the bottom edge of the skirt I'm just gonna do that by doing a one centimeter double folded hem and then I can give the whole thing a press clip any loose threads and try it on for the first time. hemming my skirt and now I can take it over to the ironing board give it a good press all over and snip off any little loose threads like that and then I can try it on and here's the finished Sophie skirt I love how it looks these two colors together look so amazing it's such a cool statement skirt made from really simple shapes I also wanted to show you another way you could use this technique and do the wavy line horizontally instead of vertically. It's exactly the same, you just draw your curvy line across the skirt rather than down the center front. And it is also such a cool way to make a really simple skirt really groovy. I hope you like this tutorial and if you want to find more self-drafting projects like this one, you can find them in my book Sew It Yourself. It comes out in June in Australia and New Zealand and August in the UK and USA and rest of the world. You can find it on Google or Amazon or Booktopia or my website or wherever they sell books in your country. Today we're working from this really cute little corner, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes of what we're working with. Lelania's gonna pan over to the side and you can see the rest of my studio. So this room used to be, <laughs> this room used to be my little sister's bedroom and I hijacked it a couple, uh, like two years ago. And now this is where I shoot and film and work from home and do everything and so and uh, so I'm gonna get back into the tutorial but I just wanted to show you the, the background. Mm -hmm. 